Viewer discretion is advised. What kid hasn't wanted to own a Pokemon at some point? How amazing would it be to watch a Poke battle between a Charizard and a Blastoise? But maybe things like that, the unbelievable, I mean, should remain just that, fantasies. As kids, we don't really understand the real-world ramifications of our youthful dreams. I, for one, was unfortunate enough to have that dark reality shoved into my face. Allow me to explain. My brother and I were 13 and were going crazy over the new Pokemon Diamond and Pearl game. Well, I wasn't as enthusiastic about it as he was. Sure, I played the game often late into the night, but my brother, Jace, went full throttle into the fandom by this point. He bought shirts, pajamas, and little trinkets of his favorite Pokemon, Piplup. You know, that little water penguin looking thing? Anyway, it didn't matter where he was. He'd have something with a Piplup on it and wasn't embarrassed or ashamed at all to let everyone know it. I admit it was a little cringe to see my brother like this, but he wasn't hurting anyone. He wasn't. Eventually, my brother started to complain about his arms hurting, that they were getting stiff, that his fingers would get stuck together for some reason. He often complained of headaches as well, that he could feel his skull shift around. I wrongly assumed his body was stiff and sore from just playing games too long, as well as severe eye strain from looking at his screen from dawn to dusk. If only that were the case. Instead, I had to watch my brother transform into a grotesque abomination. Jace stopped attending school, citing he was feeling extremely sick, yet refused to be taken to the hospital. And despite our parents' efforts, they couldn't pull him out of his room, literally. It was like he had gotten stronger, far stronger than a kid of his age should be, with how easy he pushed our dad away. Locked in his room, I could hear him complain about his hands and feet, and something that began to protrude from his face. Eventually, he stopped talking and stopped coming out. I mustered up the courage to finally check on him and found him laying on his bed covered by a blanket. Upon removing his covers, I gasped in shock and was repulsed by the nasty scent that wafted up to my nose. He was dead. Or rather, what used to be my brother was dead. His favorite Piplup hoodie had merged with his flesh, creating some bulbous, bluish-looking penguin thing with a beak made of bone. His fingers had merged together and slightly resembled flippers. Jace's poor feet were now bent at awkward angles like they were trying to become talons. Amidst the remains of my brother, there was a slip of paper with a single crooked sentence written on it. My dream is nothing but a nightmare. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object SCP-5254. 5254, also known as Gotta Catch Em All, refers to the transformation process of a human or object into one of the 980 Pokemon created by Nintendo. Through unknown anomalous means, any person or object is transformed through prolonged exposure to any clothing or accessories that resemble a Pokemon. This process is documented as being extremely painful, and most humans are unable to survive the process. Foundation autopsy reports show that organs and flesh of the deceased have been converted into plastics or cotton. In other words, the material that made up the Pokemon memorabilia replaces the infected person's flesh. Later tests have also shown that an unknown DNA has been found within the deceased. This DNA not only replaces the victim's DNA, but it is speculated to be the DNA of the Pokemon as well. After further research, it has been discovered that these transformations occur if the victim slightly resembles the Pokemon in question. And if the victim in question is near a large number of individuals wearing said Pokemon garb. Discovered rather recently by the Foundation in 2019 in Yokohama, Japan at the Pikachu Outbreak Festival, 5254 publicly began with a victim behaving erratically while wearing a Pikachu costume. Publicly redacted videos showed a large number of individuals parading down the street in Pikachu costumes. One of them stumbled out of the crowd and charged into a nearby crowd. Nearly a dozen others followed suit shortly after. Foundation MTF Wranglers were mobilized to not only locate these victims, but to terminate them as well for research. Interestingly enough, those harmed in the attack reported electrical burns. Over the course of 2017 to 2018, a series of emails between one Sir Viper and high-level executives from Nintendo, Pokemon Company, and Niantic caught the Foundation's attention. These emails insinuated the plan to bring Pokemons to life, as well as to use them in various purposes such as military firepower, 
quite literally using Charizard and potential clean energy using Pikachu. And most disturbingly, kidnapping of children from orphanages under an outreach program for the purposes of running tests. After this, all communications with Sir Viper ceased, and the O5 Council ordered a raid on the Pokemon Company offices on June 16, 2019. This was done in fear of a potential K-Class scenario. The members from MTF Epsilon 11 were chosen for the raid. The men were gathered by the team leader in the room for a briefing. Alright boys, the darndest thing just happened. Remember them Pokemons you played with when you were little? They just got real. People are turning into them. We're gonna find out why. Now, we've notified the Japanese government about this op. The target is the Pokemon Company offices in Tokyo. Uh, no disrespect, Cap, but I simply can't take this seriously. A Pokemon raid? Really? What's the plan? Human lives are involved in this case. Keep that in mind and maybe you'll realize the gravity of the situation. We'll be split into squads. Your team will be on crowd control duty while we do our thing. We move quickly and we're gonna hit that place hard and fast. Understood? Yes, sir. All right, grab your gear. We move out in five. The team arrived at the location via chopper. The men touched down on the roof of the Pokemon Company offices. Multiple MTF squads disembarked, quickly covering the area. Fox 3, status report. Fox 3 and a different squad had blended into the crowd in the lower levels where a Pokemon exhibition was going on. Civilian evacuation in the lower levels in progress. There's a huge Pokemon center on the first floor that's still filled with tourists. Quarantine for infection. Then rendezvous at coordinates. Roger. All right, you heard the man. Get those Poke fanatics out of there. All right, team, on me. The MTF agent stacked up against the fire exit on the roof, and the door opened easily. They descended down the fire exit steps and reached a set of double steel doors on the lower level. Silently, Fox 1 gestured Fox 2 to prep some smoke grenades in a flashbang as he breached the doors. All the canisters are tossed in, and just as they were about to storm in, there was a huge mechanic clunk from the other end of the hall, followed by the sound of heavy, thudding footsteps. Hold on. Shh. Hear that? The men watched the corridor in anticipation. A low growl, followed by a roar. A two meters tall creature emerged from the smoke. Orange skin, elongated snout, and two vast wings flapped with power to blow away the smoke. It then roared again straight at the men as they froze. Holy crap! Is that freaking Charizard? Engage! Engage! The dragon-like creature immediately spewed streams of fire, setting some of the men aflame. Get cover, get cover, but keep the pressure on. What's the plan here, boss? Shoot it till it's dead. And eventually, the team filled the creature with bullet holes, and it was brought down. Its fallen carcass lay slumped over in the middle of the hallway, bleeding from its wounds. Christ, never thought I'd see the day where I gunned down my favorite Pokemon. Clear, proceed to lower levels. The MTF passed more and more hallways. Pokemon posters lined the walls with slogans like prepare for trouble and make it double with the occasional person in a white coat detained as they emerge from a doorway. Makes you wonder what kind of messed up stuff they've been hiding down here. Quiet, eyes up front. They arrived at another steel door. They stacked up and this time Fox 1 gestured for explosives. Breach and clear. Weapons free. Shoot anything that walks funny. They set the charge and took cover behind a turn in the corridor. The doors flew wide open as the explosives went off. Screams echoed within the room as the MTF entered and scanned for targets through the smoke. As the smoke cleared, they could see the room was brightly lit and filled with colorful drawings, toys scattered on the floor, and rows of metal cages set against the walls, housing abominations that shocked the team. Good God! The creatures within the cages were at various stages of 5254 transformation. However, most of them can be seen were transformed from children. These kids. Wait, does this mean the Charizard we killed before was... Yeah, looks like it. I'm sorry. Fox 2 stumbled back and vomited in disgust as the children afflicted with 5254 cried. Jesus. Fox Den, think we found the kids. Requesting immediate medical pickups. Copy. Any sign of Sir Viper? Negative. Only his handiwork. We're seizing electronic serves as evidence. Copy. Over. Over. Christ. Think I've seen enough for a day. 
I remember when I was a kid. I loved Pokemon. Loved it. Every game, every cartoon, figurines, I'd collect them all. Hell, I even have a sticker album that I keep in my drawers at home. I've always wished that I live in the Pokemon world, seeing and playing with these fantastic beings. Well, you don't have to wish for it any longer. It has become a reality. Your wish has come true. I used to think being around them would be so much fun. But now, I'm not so sure anymore. In order to mitigate the effects of 5254, embedded Foundation personnel in the Pokemon Company worked to suppress the popularity of Pokemon. This was done by causing outrage of Pokemon Sword and Shield by releasing it with limited Pokemons, as well as preventing large-scale Pokemon-themed events. Despite the Foundation's efforts, Sir Viper has yet to be apprehended.